How many times over the last few months have you stepped outside from the comfort of your home into what feels like a sauna? The air feels so thick you can almost feel yourself sweating before you even take a step. Obviously, it sucks and it makes running a lot harder. But just how much harder? How much does it impact your workouts and, maybe even more importantly, your race times? Well, that's what we're going to look at in today's video. By the end of this video, you're going to learn the difference between running in the heat versus humidity and which is worse, the scientific reason running in the heat and or humidity is harder, and exactly how much running in the heat and humidity will impact your pace. Plus, if you stick around to the end, I'm going to share with you a calculator that does all the math for you so you can track exactly how much you need to adjust your pace based on the given heat and humidity. I'm Jeff Goddard. I'm a former professional runner, certified running coach, and a published author of two books, and my running can be found in the likes of Runner's World, Competitor, and more. So let's get started. So why is running in the heat hard? Well, let's start out with the most obvious. When you run in the heat, you have an increase in your overall body temperature. Just like when you run a fever, the higher your core body temperature, the worse that you're gonna feel. Second, as soon as the body starts to heat up, blood is diverted to the skin where cooling takes place through sweating and evaporation. Therefore, less blood is available to transport oxygen to the working muscles. Less oxygen means that you can't run as fast or as hard, and the effort to main maintain or increase your pace dramatically increases. In this way, training and racing in the heat is somewhat similar to altitude training. It's why training is heat training is often called the poor man's altitude training. Finally, you do become more easily dehydrated in, in hot and warmer conditions. When fluid levels drop, your body's cooling methods, mainly due to sweat, erode, and you have a harder time controlling your body temperature. This in turn causes your core body temperature to rise even faster, which creates a vicious cycle and severely limits your performance. Now, we've talked about heat. What about humid weather? Researchers have found that even when the feels like temperature was equivalent, hot and humid conditions were more taxing than hot and dry conditions. So why is this? In dry heat, the peak oxygen consumption runners were able to achieve was 5.7% lower than their maximal oxygen cons consumption in comfortable conditions. However, when exercising in hot and humid conditions, this performance decrement rate jumped to 12%. Heart rates during exercise showed a similar pattern. For a given power output on the exercise bike, hot and humid conditions elicited a higher heart rate than hot and dry conditions. So what happens when you combine heat and humidity? The compounding effects of heat and humidity can be observed outside the laboratory. In 2012, a group of scientists analyzed the performance of almost 1.8 million marathon finishers at every major, major city marathon over a 10 year period, trying to find correlations between marathon completion time and local weather conditions on the day of the race. Now, as you'd expect, hotter temperatures resulted in slower marathon times, but humidity had a strong impact too. Now, one additional factor that I think is often overlooked when it comes to heat training is how training itself in hot conditions alters the impact of recovery. Not only does heat and humidity make that one specific workout hotter, it also hampers your recovery and your ability to perform on subsequent workouts. After you exercise in hot condition, your body needs to spend more energy on cooling itself rather than delivering nutrients to your battered muscles. And additionally, you're using more total energy, resulting in increased overall fatigue. And second, when the muscles can't get the nutrients they need to repair the damage caused by the workout, recovery is slower and you may not be fully prepared for your next workout like you normally would be. And finally, if you spend any time outside of training in hot conditions, your body also needs to work harder than normal, once again, increasing the amount of overall fatigue you experience. Research data has shown that the body's response to increasingly hotter temperatures is non-linear, meaning that your performance will get vastly worse going from 70 to 90 degrees compared to 50 to 70. According to researcher Tim Noakes, distance running performance is impaired markedly when core temperature approaches a critical threshold. Once your body approaches this point, your nervous system will intentionally induce fatigue, slowing you down to protect yourself from excessive heat buildup. That said, I know we all want specific answers. So using the available research, we put together this calculator that factors in the temperature, humidity, time spent running, and the effort you're putting in to show you just how much you need to adjust your pace. I've already explained the research on temperature and humidity, but duration and intensity are also important here too. Running for 15 minutes in the heat is going to be drastically easier than running for an hour and thus not have as much an impact on your performance. Likewise, running an easy run in the heat isn't going to be as difficult as a tempo run or even a race. More effort means more internal heat generated, more sweat loss, and more susceptible to temperature. I'll link to the calculator in the description as well as put in the link here on the screen. It's free and it's super easy to use. 
Keep in mind, this is just a formula and that everyone is gonna fare slightly different when racing or training in the heat. So you may need to make a few tweaks once you test it out. Plus heat adapted runners or times you adapt to the heat are gonna make training and racing slightly easier. Keep this in mind when using this for races. You may be on the lower adjustment range in the middle of the summer, but need the higher adjustment range if you train in colder or winter conditions rather than hot conditions. I'll include more links in the description for how to adapt racing in the heat when coming from a cold climate as well as an article that we did on running in the heat for masters runners and what older runners need to do and look out for specifically. So thank you again for watching for so much. I hope you enjoy the calculator and definitely let me know what you think about it in the comments. Have a great run today.